Hi, I'm Josh from Zenati Consulting. This is a tutorial on how to create custom pages in Zoho Creator. If you find this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing below. Thank you and enjoy. Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Today we're gonna to talk about creating custom pages in Zoho Creator. Within custom pages, it allows you to create uh, dashboards. You can embed certain components on these pages. It could also be a place where uh, you embed a bunch of buttons so it's easy for you to quickly access other reports. Dashboards are really helpful. Um, they can be used both on a desktop view, also on mobile view, and they can be customized a little bit uh, depending on the device you're using. So today we're gonna to talk about how we create the dashboards, how we can customize them, and we might even talk about uh, some HTML components on those dashboards as well. And when I would talk about dashboards, that's all referring to just custom pages. To create a custom page, all we have to do is go into the uh, application editor. We do that by clicking edit this application, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hop into that. Uh, we have our tabs here, and I want to create a tab and the at the front of the application. It's going to be a home page, and that home page is going to be a place where we might have some uh, dashboard components, such as uh, uh, target indicators. We might have some daily reports and let's also put an embedded report of uh, open tasks. So let's go ahead and build this out. To do this, we click on the plus button and we are going to create a page. There are template pages you can choose from. However, I don't really recommend it. Uh, they are pretty generic and you're going to require, it's going to require a lot of customization anyways. So I always start from a new page. I'm just going to call this home page. Now that we are in the page builder, we can go ahead and start adding components and components can either be panels. So a panel could represent a data point you want to show. Data point could either be maybe just a static value that shows for everyone, or you could do some minimum, maximum, median, uh, average, count, distinct count. You have all of these options that you can choose from to display information. So let's say you wanted to show a sum of maybe, no, not that. Let's say we want to see a count of uh, the number of tasks we have that are open. Status equals open. Now this is gonna show us open tasks. We can take that a little further and we can specify additional criteria in here as well. So maybe we wanna see status equals open and uh, the email Assign to email equals zoho.login user ID. Zoho.login user ID is one of those little trick uh, variables that Zoho offers. There's a few of them that Zoho offers. Uh, Zoho.login user ID will provide the current login user's email address. Zoho.login user will provide the current login user's profile name. And the profile name is just a uh, kind of a random string of characters. It's unique to every profile user, uh, but it's not customizable. Login user ID is their email address and is a little bit easier to recognize. So that's typically what I prefer is the login user ID. Uh, other variables you have are Zoho.current uh, date. So you have current date, you also have Zoho.current time, and those could be used in these filters as well. Now that we have this dashboard created, this is what I've just added here is just a panel. And so this panel, like you see, 
can be customized in many different ways. I have, in this case, just a count of open tasks, and maybe I wanted to change this icon here. I can search for task. It doesn't always have an option here for you, so maybe you want to say check list, check box. Here's a good, good option there. All of these components that I'm clicking on here can be customized independently on the right hand side. So the and you have a few things you can choose from. So any all these components, I can display information. I can trigger an action on clicking this component. And then I can also style it in a particular way. So each of these components could have a separate action or uh, styled a little bit differently. You can do that independently for each of these blocks. Or you can click on this outside block and then let's say you want to do an action on this one. That's going to then perform an action on the entire block. So you just click the block and it's going to open up a, uh, in this case, you could open up a URL, a form, a report, page, or you could even execute a function. In this case, I'm going to show a list of open tasks because this is what that metric is indicating. So I want to show a report so I can view that data. So let's create a report. I'm going to open report. I can either choose my tasks or all tasks. I certainly have options here. In this case, I'm just going to choose all tasks just to keep it simple. And now we want to specify query parameters. Query parameters would allow us to specify we only want to see open tasks and we only want to see tasks that are my tasks. Because we only want to see my tasks, I'm going to keep this simple and just go into the my tasks report. Um, and if you didn't want to add query parameters here, you could just create the report with the query parameters added on the back end and then just link that report. For this uh, demo, I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how to add query parameters into this box so that it actually pre-filters the report whenever you click on it. The last thing you have to choose whenever you select an action is what's, where it's going to open. Is it going to open up in a new window, same window, or pop-up? In this case, I'm going to choose pop-up. Let's go ahead and look at our app and see what we have. I usually keep the keep it open in a separate tab, so I'm just going to open that up right here. Refresh. And you can see the home tab has gotten placed here at the right. We'll reorganize that in a second, but let's just look at it. So now we have a home tab with one widget on it. And if I click on it, it's going to open up my tasks. But notice some of these tasks have not or have already been closed, and I don't want to see the ones that are closed. I only want to see the ones that are open. For this, we need to add a query parameter to the settings on the back end. So if I go back into the editor, open up the page builder and configure, we need to add, sorry, I click on this action here. I need to add query parameters to this box. For query parameters, it's uh, just like you would add a query uh, URL parameter to any form or page for that matter. And the, what you need is the API name. So in this case, I need to know the API name of the status field. I'm gonna go into the task form to navigate to the task form, I click the top drop down, and then I choose the form task. Click on the status field, and I'm looking at the field link name. That is what I want to copy and put into the query along with the value that I want to filter for. So the field link name and value both need to be added to that query parameter. I'm going to get back into the query parameter. I can either get to it by clicking the drop down and going to pages, clicking there and open page builder, or I could simply just click the home page and open page builder. 
let's go ahead and configure this. Click on just the area, the white space area so I can get to the big block. We're going to add a query parameter for status equals open. That's how you add query parameters. It's just the API name equals the value that you want to assign or filter by. If you want to add additional query parameters, all you have to do is do an and sign. And so if you wanted to include additional, then so and uh, do date is something. Um, I don't have an example for you on this one, but if you had additional query parameters that you want to filter on, just use an and. Uh, there are other tricks you can use within this, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. There are uh, a bunch of different things you can do within here, along with inputting page parameters from the existing page you're on. So maybe that can be covered in a future video. Uh, there's, there's a lot of cool things we can do with page parameters passing into query parameters. Uh, another video though. So let's go ahead and look at what we've just done. We've added a query parameter, status equals open. Open is a static value, so it's that, that value is not changing, and it's just only going to show us status equals open. Let's go back in here to our page refresh, and we are going to open that up. You can see here now it's only showing us the open Ta open tasks in this case, any, any record where status was open. This is that same report. So if I open my tasks, this report in another tab, it's still going to show me all those closed tasks, but because I've opened this up with query parameters, it is filtered. I can prove that by clicking the uh, magnifying glass here and you can see status contains open. It's already been defined within here. I can actually remove this status and search. Let's see, there's a, I should be able to remove that status. Oh, well, it's given me some errors. Uh, essentially, you should be able to remove that status on some pages, but it's giving me a little error message. So uh, not today. <laughs> so that is how query parameters work within components. And that's just one thing we can add to a page. So we have open tasks in this case. Well, let me talk to you about what we can add first. Certainly we, we can add uh, uh, components and just simple panel indicators. Uh, this can show, like I said, sums of information, counts, uh, record counts, uh, maximum values, minimum values, stuff like that. We also have charts that we can add. A chart would show records over time, essentially, or uh, basically X versus Y axis. So you have a bunch of different chart types you can create. All of these have their own little customizations within them. All right, so we're going to create a, a report that's going to show the total number of tasks we have for any given due date. This might be helpful for a manager to assign tasks to a developer uh, without overloading them on a particular date. So if they have maybe five tasks due one day, but uh, that's going to be too much. So they, they might want to see this uh, for any one developer. The X axis is going to be based on due date. The Y axis is going to be the record count. To do this, category is due date. And we're just going to specify due date date here, that's the field label. And then the Y axis is going to be aggregate. And we're going to just take the count. We have a bunch of different things we can do in here. We could sum records, some values. So if I had a field, a number field within the task, or in this case, I do have number fields associated to related records, um, I can pull those in. Or I could also take counts of any fields that I have in here. And I could also just pull a total records count, which is uh, what we're going to do today. And so we're just going to call this count. Now we have a report that's going to show us over time what how many tasks we have due 
for any given date. I could create uh, criteria to specify maybe we only want to show the tasks that are open. I could put that criteria in here. I could put other criteria and then I could also specify or so it's either and or or whenever you're building these criteria out. I'm going to skip that and we're, we're only going to have one criteria line for this case. And let's just see what we have. So I'm going to go back in here, refresh my page. So here we go. We have now a component that's going to show all of the, in this case, open tasks and where their due dates lie. So I have two tasks that are open due today and 28th. And then I have one task that's open due tomorrow. This might be a helpful uh, report for, a for an employee or for a manager. You can see the, the beauty of building out these reports. They're very easy to do and they're live. You don't have to wait for any records to sync uh, from uh, one application to another. It's all live. As soon as you make an update within the creator app, you refresh your page within a dashboard, it's going to show you uh, immediately that change. This is different than like some other apps like the CRM, Zoho CRM. If you wanna show information within Zoho Analytics, you have to wait three hours for that information to sync over. That is not the case within Creator, which makes uh, it pretty enticing uh, to create these uh, reports or these dashboards within Creator. Other components we have that we can uh, display in here are gauge charts, which essentially is another type of chart, but it's just a, a meter chart. So a target, a target meter essentially specify your low target and then high, and then you give it the data that you want to, to display. We can do searching. So maybe we wanted to search for a particular record. Let's say we want to search for um, a report and we want to search for an employee based on their email uh, or let's say for based on their first name contains. So this is going to show me a pop up now in this case of all of the employees that match the search criteria that I'm going to enter. Let's say we want to style this a little differently. I don't really like the, the padding that it gives you. So let's just get rid of all the padding. There we go. That looks a little nicer. There's some other uh, things you can certainly style, change maybe the search button characteristics. Maybe you want a different color. Uh, the bar might be a different color. You can, you can change all of this. Um, I'm not going to play around with it too much. So let's just go through that. Let's look at it. Now, whenever I search, it show me all of the records that match that criteria. And in this case, it's going to show it in a pop-up. It could also show it in a, a new window or, um, same window. So those are the options there. Some people don't really like having these borders. You can see on each of these widgets, when I add them, there's some margin with between each of these components. Some people don't like that. Some people like it to be all just stacked up on top of each other. To do that, sorry, let me get rid of this other tab. To do that, we wanna go back into the editor. We click done. And from here, we see a few customizations on the right hand side. And this is specific for web. If I went into mobile, you can see there's a few other settings we have here for mobile. So for web though, let's say we want to make it plain. If I make it plain and I go back into the viewer and I refresh, you can see how it changes the look and feel of this page. And you might like it, you might not, depending on the page or what information you're displaying. Uh, you, uh, changing it from card to plain might be in your favor. So those are your options. You can also customize this independently for a mobile device. 
So maybe for a mobile device, you want it to show card, but for maybe for a mobile device, you want to show plane because you have limited uh, real estate, but for web, maybe card is okay. For mobile device, you can also specify if you want it to show stacked versus actual. That means a stacked would not have anything left or right, no other columns, just one column of components, whereas stacked would give you those additional columns and would actually space it out uh, as you have defined. Sometimes you have a small device and the uh, single stacked layout is going to be best, but not always. Uh, so you do have this option. You do also have the option to customize this independently for an iPad as well. So maybe phone is a little different than an iPad. Uh, you can customize that independently. We're going to get back into the editor here. And I want to show a few other things that we can do. So some other things we could do, certainly we can add forms. So a form, I could embed the form directly into the page, or I could add it as a button. So a button, it would open it up in a pop-up or maybe a new window, uh, but the embed would be directly within the, the, the page itself. Let's say we wanna add a task and it's just going to be a button to open a form and it's going to be the form task. We'll open it up in a pop-up. We can either specify width or height in terms of percents or in terms of pixels. I usually just do percents. It's a little easier to just get through it and it's going to dynamically control the height of it. So now we have add task and search. You can see how we can reformat the page using the little arrow bar, arrow bar here. And let's also get rid of the padding. Now that looks a little better. We're going to go back into our page. I'm going to refresh. That's what we're looking like now. If I can add a task. I can search. I can see my open tasks. And then I can also see tasks that I have open. If I click add task, there you go. It just goes ahead and pops this up and uh, I can fill out that task form. If I go back into the editor, other, other uh, components we have to work with are reports, which is a very handy one. Maybe you want to see your open tasks that you have. So if you wanted to show, First, we need to choose the right report. Let's make sure I, my tasks, add, edit, delete, duplicate. These are options you have for the user. It, maybe you wanna sh show these options or not. Uh, you can control that within page embedded components. If I add a filter here, now I can search status equals open. And notice, I don't have to do a query parameter when I'm embedding a report this way. If I do a pop-up window, then I do have to use query parameters. So there's times when you do need them and you don't need them. Um, so it's important to know when you do need them, how to use them. Now you can see I have a report of my open tasks on this page as well. Maybe I don't like it to be so big and I wanna maybe move this over and I can drag that component down. Can reorganize this a bit. And so that's what it looks like. You can start to see how easy it is to customize these pages and really how customizable they really are. Uh, we can add reports. We haven't talked much about snippets, but snippets is where you can really go crazy. Um, snippets allow you to embed either HTML components. You could use ZML, which is Zoho's XML style uh, coding, which incorporates Deluge. HTML can also incorporate Deluge as well to make your HTML dynamic. So maybe you wanted to create a uh, dynamic 
HTML button that's going to open up a particular thing based on the page you're on. There's a lot of cool things we can do with HTML and we'll have in the future, in the future we'll have a whole video talking about HTML snippets, how we can pair that with Deluge and make these pages beautiful because within these HTML snippets, you can embed HTML and pair CSS with that. And then if you make the CSS dynamic, now you have a fully dynamic page uh, all built out of HTML and, and CSS. So a lot of really cool things we can do with that. We will have a, a very detailed video uh, going through some of the, the benefits and use cases there. And uh, certainly we'll, we'll have a few examples on how to build that out. You don't have to use HTML. You could also just define embed uh, external links. So maybe you had a YouTube video or some other type of link you want to embed. As long as it, as long as it is a public URL, it can be embedded into a creator. Last, we have uh, buttons. I think we've already shown this one. I did add a button here for add tasks, so that's pretty easy to add buttons. And then you do have the ability to create other widgets. Uh, widgets would be custom web components outside of creator. Um, so that uh, is also available to you as well. I'm not gonna talk too much about those. Uh, but they they uh, do open up the the window a little bit for additional customization. So that is building these pages out, uh, basic pages. Uh, right now, I haven't embedded any HTML, and we haven't done too much with page parameters. Or well, we haven't done anything with page parameters in in this one, but we have talked a little about query parameters. Okay, so now what we have is, if I go back into the dashboard here, we can see uh, we have a, a sample dashboard. A few components are added. I can search for records. I can search for an employee in this case. I could add a task. I can view any of my open tasks, uh, view the tasks here as well. So this is just a count and then I can view it here. Um, and I hope you, you've learned a few things as far as creating these components, maybe uh, spark some ideas on some components you want to add to yours. And now we have a custom page that we can throw in to our application anywhere. And like I said, I do want to move this to the beginning. So let to the front of uh, our tab group, just so it's a normal home, home page. So let's just go through that real quick. Go into sections, scroll down, and it, it creates a new tab for it and puts it in its own tab group. I'm gonna bring this entire tab group up to the top. And we're gonna go back into our page and look at it. So now we have our home tab up at the front. So that is how to create pages in Zoho Creator. In the future, we'll talk on how to create HTML pages or how to incorporate HTML within these pages, uh, but that will be for a future video. I hope you've learned a lot on uh, these components, how to create them, how to customize it, and I hope it's also sparked some ideas for your own practices. Go ahead and like and subscribe this video. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below, and have a great day. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell, which notifies you when we post our videos in the future. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave those in the comments below. We really appreciate that as that it helps us get better. See you on our next video.